Hi guys, last game of the season coming up now that we're on a 9 game format. For the past 2 weeks we've been playing Halley's Comet, a vertical shmup released by Taito in 1986. I mentioned last week that the graphics weren't much to write home about given the year, but having played it a reasonable amount the gameplay really isn't any better. The biggest issue with the game is that the power ups completely unbalance it. At the beginning or when you lose a life your base weapon is so weak that it is extremely difficult especially given your large and slow moving ship. As you pick up power ups your shot quickly goes from a single vertical stream to a wide spread shot. This is now massively overpowered and as enemies only appear from the top of the screen you can take them out almost instantly. I was struggling to get much past the first stage for quite some time with a best score of around 250,000. I then got a game where I was pretty much fully powered up and did 1.1 million on my first life. Once I died I didn't get beyond 1.2 million. This level of imbalance does not make for a good game. You are either getting beaten down, feeling like the game is unfair or cruising, massively overpowered until you make a mistake. Neither scenario I found particularly enjoyable. So although I'm sure the game has its fans, I'm not one of them and won't be returning. With this turd done with, let's take a look at the scores. We've had 14 people take part this week, which is a bit of a drop, but maybe not surprising for deep into the season and the lacklustre game. I'd love to big it up, but no, it was shit. From Colin in 10th down to Robert in 13th, each of those guys were around the 4 to 500,000 mark, which is not an unreasonable score given the most challenging part of the game is when you are weak at the beginning. KMA in 9th is then a little ahead with 700,000, with Paul, Bob and Mark not hugely ahead. I'm then in 5th, being the first person past a million points and to be honest that was a pretty lucky game. Milthy is ahead in 4th with 1.26 million. Our top 3 have all done very well. In 3rd is my retro tech with 1.86 million a very solid score. Graham finishes in second, having improved multiple times over the two weeks with an excellent 2.7 million. Last week I called it though, and this week's winner comes as no surprise. We all know Big Juffer can play a shmup, and he's topped the table for the second time this season with this week's winning score of 3.6 million. Well done to Juff for an excellent win. Before we look at the graphs, I should say that we didn't hear from Pearl. I suspect we may have had a different winner if he'd fired up a few games of this this week. Here is the score distribution. On the left we can see people being fairly close, gradually upping scores through to my retro tech in third. Our top two though have separated themselves from the pack, being a full bin clear but both ending up in the same bin. It's not often that our top score is 10 times bigger than the lowest but that's what we've got here, so well done to both of our top two. Next up is the difficulty curve and a curve this isn't, we have pretty much two straight lines. From our lowest score through to Milthy in 4th it's a pretty linear increase, reflecting the linear scoring system and a fairly flat difficulty curve. Beyond that to our top 3 we have another straight line, but now a little steeper, suggesting that as you increasingly get on top of this game bigger scores become much more doable. This is consistent with the way the power ups work, if you can max them out and you've got the skill and the luck then you can pretty much keep on playing. Finally the progress over the week, at the top it's pretty much been the Juffa show, we had a few early scores of around 100,000 points before Paul moved things on as he at least knows the basics of this game. After a day or so it was Juff who pushed the scores up and soon did over a million points. He improved again a few times ultimately to his winning score of over 3 million points. Likely given the overall season placings Graham gave it a good go this week and his efforts paid off for second place, having to compete with a strong show from my retro tech. You can also see how me and Milthy jump up towards the end, it's a bit of a case of waiting for that great run to come as I had many failures up until that point and once I had a good run I knew it was diminishing returns spending more time with it. So with only one game left let's take a look at the league table, there's a bit of movement in the places which is a little surprising given we only have one game left. Retro Arcade Challenge and KMA are both up too. Milthy had an excellent week with a 4th place, that gets him ahead of Colin for 11th. Up into 5th is My Retro Tech with his 3rd place this week. 
Him, Blue Yak and Mark are only 10 points apart, so it's all to play for there. Then finally, Bob has got ahead of Pearl, who didn't play this week. Either of them could take third. Then at the top, with that victory for Jaff, the gap is close to Graham. He's just 14 points clear at the top, which is less than the gap between first and second, so if either of them take the next win, they'll win the season. So for the last game this season, let's run the random selector. I've had 14 games sent to me, with Image Fight, Iron Horse and Ikaruga getting two votes each. Our most popular game was also my choice, which was I'm Sorry, a game I think would be a good one to finish the season with. Ikaruga was the choice of this week's winner Juff, so with that being trebled, it has the highest chance of coming up. So let's set things going and see what we get. Okay, selectors running, slowing down. Ooh, could it be I'm sorry? Oh, okay. So Graham getting a game, obviously I would expect gives him advantage um, for the overall season. Uh, I don't really know much about Iron Horse. Um, I will go look it up and make a video and be back in a sec. So the final game of the season will be Iron Horse, released by Konami in 1986. Before now, I knew very little about this game, but a few goes and it looks and plays well. The game is a side-scrolling running gun where you have three planes of movement and a choice of three weapons. You have either the whip, which has a medium range which can take out a few enemies at once, the pistol, which has the longest range but can only kill enemies one at a time, or the punch, which has the shortest range but knocks enemies back, taking out others, and scores twice as many points for each hit too. I suspect that either the punch or the pistol are the best weapons, but I'm no expert. A nice feature is that you have the option of moving within the carriage or on the roof. I'm sure there are pros and cons of both, but I was tending to stay in the carriage in my first few runs. There are three buttons, one to attack, another to duck, and then a special attack too, which you pick up periodically during the stages. It also looks like there's a Mr. Implementation, which could be good too. We'll be using the version KROM, which is ironhors.zip, and default settings, including normal difficulty. At this point, I'd usually ask for suggestions for the next game, but given this is the last game of the season, I only need games from Graham and Juff, and next time we'll be a champion's choice. Who will win the season? We'll find out in two weeks' time. See you then.